All right, it's the Mike Delivers Podcast, and I'm excited to have back on this podcast Andrew Boric. He's the co-founder of Lunchbox. Him and I talked a lot a few episodes back uh, where we got into the great initiative that Lunchbox is doing and how they are helping restaurants take back the ordering power, which was super cool. But today, we're going down a different route. Today, we're talking about Taco Bell. This Taco Bell month is in the books for my wife and I. And Andrew and I were emailing, and I found out that he is a big Taco Bell fan. And uh, according to his words, not mine, fanatic. So I was excited <laughs> to have Andrew back on the podcast to talk a little Taco Bell. Andrew, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, absolutely. So first off, I got super, super excited when I saw your email. Because when I saw your email initially, I had never had tasted Taco Bell yet. So like everything you wrote in your email like it was it was like reading another language i was like the crunch wrap <laughs> supreme cheesy gordita crunch mountain dew baja blast i was like i don't know anything that he is saying here so i thought that was super cool you gave me like um a, a very nice detailed email that was almost like some cliff notes that helped me along my uh, uh taco bell journey this last month well, I'm I'm glad that I was able to yeah provide you with all those details because, uh, I mean, it, however I can offer my extensive knowledge of Taco Bell to to help others, I I am more than happy to. Yeah, and that you did. So like for me, I had never re- I had it a little bit in college, but not enough to to know the menu. I just had some I had steak quesadillas. I made my own order, mm-hmm. so nothing nothing really off the Taco Bell menu, and it was a limited menu because it was at one of the dining halls where I went to school. Now. For you, you talk about being a, a you know a big Taco Bell fan. Uh, get into like how that started, how long you had it, and some of the details of where the love of Taco Bell started. Yeah, so I think all all of my childhood, uh, I, I would say I was Taco Bell deprived. Uh, I didn't have any Taco Bell. My my first ever Taco Bell was on my 18th birthday. Actually, I had a oh. bunch of friends of mine. Uh, we met up, and they said, "All right, are we going to mark this occasion?" And I, all right, let's go to Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, and so I, I hadn't thought nothing of it. Uh, but when we got there, uh, you know, I was the typical person where you'd say, "Like, all right, what am I ordering? What am I getting?" And I had all my friends uh, pick four me and i think the one thing that i was really sold on was that uh, chicken quesadilla mm. and and specifically uh, uh the uh, two quesadillas that they they were like our right, andrew can eat so give him two of those and i was thinking that too I, I don't know if i can i don't know if i'll even like this thing uh but the second that we sat down and uh i, I was starting to eat and i ate one piece one of them said whoa, whoa 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 you can't you can't just go right into the quesadilla where's your sauce and and so uh, i said oh the sauce and sauce too they show me the whole wide array there's the the verde there's the mild uh but i really settled on the fire sauce because i'm like i i like hot i like hot stuff i like spicy mm-hmm. things um you know I, I, anybody watches hot ones <laughs> i'm a big fan of that show i got all those sauces and so uh i said okay yeah let's 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 take the fire sauce let's put it on here and it was like a match made in heaven i think there's something between you know over the years i've really analyzed that taco bell quesadilla and, and, and trying to understand why i loved it so much yeah. i think there's one element of it that the, the the tortilla the the type of tortilla they have that's so nice and soft and and really isn't like when they crisp it up uh parts of it are crisp parts of it are still chewy but also the big thing inside is that um that creamy uh chipotle sauce that they have mm. within there um uh the, the jalapeno uh sauce that's in there i think that is like the 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 you know the piece that makes that quesadilla because as much as i i've recreated it many times at home i know the full recipe by heart <laughs> what goes in that sauce um and so uh, uh the, all those elements put together i think the the cumin cumin is used a lot in in in, in all the taco bell stuff i find mm. um those flavors combined with that fire sauce which is just whew, Mm. perfect it's a perfect I, I i steal every time i go there I, I take like three handfuls i shove it in the bag i take it home i have a big jar labeled fire sauce in here and i sent you a picture yeah, of right, it you did. well that's what i'm that's what i'm learning andrew is these sauces are such a big part of taco yep. bell for the patreon page my wife and i did we veered off the food and for our patreon episodes we just went straight to dessert and drinks we thought that was kind of like something a little different than the food we've been trying and we ordered uh, the drinks, the Baja Blast, and we got the dessert on there, um, the cinnamon churros, and then the donuts that were on there. And the guy goes, do you want sauce? 
And we looked at each other and I was like, do we want sauce? We thought at first maybe there's like some sugary sauce that you dip the dip, uh, dipped everything in. And they go, no, no, no. Do you want the fire sauce, the mild sauce? And, the, and then we're like, sure, why not? Because that, to your point, these socks, these sauces are so craved and addicted by other people. I mean, they're they're just basically like, hey, you want them now, even though you're getting a sugary donut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think that's just the biggest part of it. Uh, and that's why I will go on to if I'm ordering Taco Bell, I will go on to Uber Eats specifically because they actually allow you to select ah. how many sauces you want, uh, where, where DoorDash and other ones don't let you. So it, it's very it's a very particular selling point. So you recreated the sauce in the yep. chicken quesadilla. One, was it hard to find? And then two, difficulty, difficulty level – I guess this is a three-part question. Was it hard to find, difficulty level in making it, and did you find that it compared to the original from Taco Bell? So I have it fully memorized by heart. So if you need me to, if you need me to tell you, I can tell you yeah, right now. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear so, it. Let's right. hear it. So uh, you got you got to have a quarter cup of, of mayo. You're going to have uh, half a teaspoon of uh, paprika. Uh, you're going to have a quarter, uh, an eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, an eighth teaspoon of uh, garlic powder. Uh, you're going to have three quarters of a teaspoon of sugar, and uh, and oh, and then specifically the most important part is you're going to take two tablespoons of the uh, uh, of the jalapeno juice. You're going to get you know, jalapenos pickled in a little jar. You're going to take two tablespoons, put that in there. And then I, I take around, you know, uh, of the slices of jalapenos that come in there, like four or five jalapenos. You really, mm. you know, mince them up really, really thin and then put that in the sauce, uh, stir it all up. And, and, oh, oh, how do I forget? The cumin, the cumin. <laughs> you got it. Open it up. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to have around a, a half tablespoon of that. And uh, yeah, I, I you know there's so many, so, uh, uh, the recreations online that you'll find of it. Um, but that specific recipe right there is right. the one that I found mim- like makes it the most, like most accurate. And so, it, is it exact? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I know there's a lot of people out there that, that, that are, you know, investigating on it, but I think that is that that's for that, that, how creamy jalapeno kind of chipotle ish i don't know what exactly it's called but <laughs> it's in there so then taco bell has not made this readily available this is people going out there and trying to hack it essentially i mean it, listen i've i've gone through this recipe i've been making for so long that mm-hmm. taco bell might have released it but this is just like such <laughs> right, a fan right, right. this is right. such a fan thing that like i've just got uh, everybody out there like has shared the recipes and, and i feel like this is what the majority of the community has like uh decided on like this is the one this is the one that's right. most accurately mimicked and i think the the ratio of mayo is super important i think that really mm. uh, uh, to be honest like you, you're off by a little bit it's going to change the flavor and especially the jalapeno sauce uh, uh, the jalapeno juice something i've noticed about taco bell this is what really stood out to me it's not expensive so i could understand too i mean the value of the amount of food that you get for the price is very low but then something else that stood out to me and i'm curious if this stands out to you when when i got it the first time and i just kind of opened it up to look in maybe this was just bad luck and this is the taco bell i went to but I found there wasn't much meat inside, and most of it was a higher tortilla ratio, soft or hard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to the actual meat and ingredients inside. Is that a Taco Bell standard? Or maybe I just got unlucky with the Taco Bell I was going to. So it really varies. I mean, I got my spot over here in Queens uh, that definitely knows how to hook it up <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. uh, but it definitely, it definitely yeah. varies. Uh, I know that the the Taco Bells with the nicer dining rooms, uh, I know that they're <laughs> they're more likely to hook it up. But the the what, when we look at the. Uh, uh, the Taco Bell quesadilla and when you do that double meat and they basically when you do double meat they just load it like there's no empty spaces on there uh, um so I, I I typically do a lot of double meat there uh but yeah it, it does vary and I have had you know everybody gets that square every now and then I mean how many quesadillas I've had and you'll get that little piece that's just right. has no no chicken in it and you're barely any cheese and you're like ah that's disappointing so uh yeah anyway I try to you know I, I try to I, I think it's a numbers game <laughs> at the end of the day when it comes to any food restaurant gotcha. um uh and and there's so many taco bells out there uh you got to find got to find your spot yeah and you had you'd mentioned some dining halls like there i'm doing more research on this now have you heard about the taco bell hotel 
I have. I actually tried to book a stay there when it happened, uh, and then I had a a wedding that was happening that same time that I had to go to. I was so frustrated because we were we were waiting there with the button ready to press, and then I realized I was like, let me check my calendar real quick to oh, see no. if there's anything. So yeah, the Taco Bell Hotel sounded like an amazing experience that I wish I would have yeah. been part. <laughs> yeah, I went on the website just to check it out, and every single room was sold out. So yeah. I'm, not that I was going to go book it, but I was just really curious. And then, you know, you're looking online, you're looking at the YouTube video they put together, and I'm like, this looks like heaven on earth. <laughs> um, yep. but is it? Is it what I – I mean, is it basically what I think it is? It's just a Taco Bell-themed hotel, and it's just where Taco Bell lovers go to kind of just hang out and relax? Yeah, yeah. It's a nice little little vacation spot, um, uh, you know, to spend either a weekend, however you want uh, uh, to – I think they have all the Taco Bell food that's there. Everything's right. – all the bed sheets and all that are fire oh. sauce and all that theme. So I think that uh, of a Taco Bell lover, uh, you feel like you're you're sleeping in paradise. I love it. All right. So in your email that you sent to me, you said – the Crunchwrap Supreme, an absolute value deal. So I didn't know what the Crunchwrap Supreme was. I think that was actually the first one that I tried. Yep. And I got to be honest, it freaked me out. I was like, "What? what is inside of this? And I was terrified when I bit in, Andrew, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that I mean, I've also recreated the Crunchwrap Supreme at home. And mm-hmm. uh, it's a beast to put together, for sure. Uh, <laughs> of the all the folding. ingredients, yeah, the folding, but also just uh, the setup of that, that hard shell, and mm. that soft shell, and, and particularly how it needs to be and, and I like and, and pressing it pressing all of that i mean i have a large you know quesadilla press that i that i use but uh, mm. i was able to you know make shift it into the taco bell press and uh yeah yeah for sure it's a it's a beast i found the doritos locos taco and maybe this is me putting too much expectations on it i thought it didn't i i, I thought i would have more of a dorito flavor and I, I talked about this on the yeah. on my podcast too and this is probably my fault i went in there thinking it was going to be like a dorito with the meat inside, but it's really yeah. just your standard taco shell with the Dorito dusting. And I, I personally, I know we're going to, we're going to get into some conflict here. First time you come <laughs> first time on the podcast, you and I are going to get into some heated debate, <laughs> but I thought that the, the, the dusting on there just didn't do it for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I, so when it came out and I, and this is might not be the case as much anymore, uh, but I know it's more limited capacity. There was the you know, cool ranch that's regular. And then there was oh, really, this, really, there was this fire spicy one that's, they basically mimicked all the chips. Right. And, uh, uh, uh and and that fire one, uh, that hot one. I mean, you know how I am. Uh, sure. uh, definitely was the deal maker for me. I think a lot of people really enjoyed the Cool Ranch one, uh, but it seems like the the nacho cheese has really stood the uh, stood to stay. Um, mm-hmm. It one part about it that I mean, it's not my typical go to. You know, I, I usually go for that uh, cheesy gordita crunch. I go for those quesadillas. Uh, you know, I'm getting that Baja Blast. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes to the, the 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 shells on them, they can be pretty crumbly. As opposed mm. to like some of the some of the other uh, shells that they have, but I think where it it where it makes up is just that it is kind of this classic um, example of what that relationship was when Taco Bell was owned by PepsiCo, and I, right. I think a lot of the a lot of the items that you'll see on that menu are like bread from that, and those right. are really, like you see the Baja Blast Mountain Dew and and the, and, and the nacho cheese. Uh, the Dorito, Locos, Tacos, you know, all of those are just kind of this, <laughs> what seemed like this, this heyday for Taco Bell, where they were just experimenting beyond their belief. I was really trying to lose weight at the time. And, gotcha. and then I'm like, and I'm looking and I'm like, these guys just keep innovating. They keep <laughs> innovating and making it difficult. But Taco Bell is one of the, the healthier ends of, <laughs> to, to, believe it or not, on the healthier side of all the, the uh, uh, fast food chains, just because of like the lack of bread and it's more tortilla based. But yeah. No, I, I mean, I, that actually makes sense a lot, and then I'm, I'm I'm assuming there's not as much food that's fried that they're mm-hmm. um ma- you know that, that yeah. they're that they're manufacturing and putting together. You know, you don't have crispy this, crispy that, and deep fried this, deep fried that. I mean, uh, obviously that's not I shouldn't say like go to Taco Bell. It's you know the health spot in the world. But I I, I hear what you're saying that that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what are there items on the menu that no longer exist that you remember loving and they just didn't uh. come back? Yes, so many. Because so uh, any, anybody uh, listening out there about you know understanding Taco Bell is that they do limited items very often. 
and and their whole menu at Taco Bell is built upon the fact that they're going to have like these you know five staples um, that they're going to rehash and and reformulate into different forms. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there's there you know there's that tortilla, there's the meat, there's the the cheese, there's the lettuce and tomato, and 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 the sauces, and they hash that up into different items. Mm. The item that was de- the biggest value that I've ever seen was the stacker. They had this item called the stacker, which in its essence was ground beef, cheese, and and, and tortilla. It was only like a buck. Wow. It was a buck and it was the size of that Crunchwrap Supreme. So <laughs> it was massive. And and I think that that was one of our go-tos. I mean, when that was around for that full month, uh, we were we were on that all the time. They had the, also that they had a steak burrito at one point. Um, uh, the te- I think it was like the Texas steak burrito. Uh, I forget the name. That one was also really high value. So there was there was some. Uh, yeah, uh, they, they release all the time and anytime they're gone and if they don't stay, um, they, uh, you know, Everyone gets really upset. The one Pete, the one that I wasn't, I still am not crazy about is the nacho fries. A lot of people really love nacho fries, but oh yeah, something about when I'm going to Taco Bell. I mean, when I'm eating those nacho fries, it's, it just doesn't. It's not significant for me. And mm. as a Taco Bell fanatic, you know, I think uh, people are, would be shocked. Some people really love the nacho fries, but. I don't know. It, it, when you put that up against, the, I mean, the, the how much you're paying for that versus right. there's some things that are on that value meal. I mean, they, uh, 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 that you can get that are uh, like the. I think all of the loaded grillers, all of the loaded grillers are like all like one sixty nine each, each, and then the potato loaded griller. They had a chipotle chicken loaded griller. Um, uh, all of those are much higher value, I think, than what you'd get from the the nacho fries. The nacho fries it only comes like ten or twelve in there. It's very little. Yeah, uh, you you brought up the nacho fries, and I I actually had tried them a couple of years ago. They brought them into the radio station yeah. when they were promoting Taco Bell, and I completely forgot about that. So I'm glad yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you reminded me that. Um, so so many follow up questions from from that. <laughs> I'm writing them down because I don't want to forget this stuff. Number one, yeah. I, I is it me and you would know you you're as the expert here. I feel like Taco Bell. Um, compared to every other fast food restaurant does the best job in just like building up excitement for the items on their menu. There's almost like a little secret, not secret. There's a hype to them when something comes out that feels different than the other places. Would you agree with that? Uh, one hundred percent. I think it's just like you know when you think of Apple and when they release stuff. <laughs> I think of Taco Bell and whenever I, I'm always interested to see oh what's their item for June? Like what's this new item that they got going on for June? I'm going to see if this is going to be something that's part of our flavor. Uh, and 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 you people get you know uh, hysterical and they they go crazy when the when the item gets removed off the menu and they say bring it back, bring it back. And sometimes you know Taco Bell will bring it back, and sometimes they won't, and then we just leave it how it was. That's mm. just the way that it was. You know, we all remember that time that the stacker was on the menu, and we all <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then the other thing is, is there a secret menu like where you can order stuff that's not on there? But if you're a true Taco Bell fan, or like, is there is there a secret menu of items? Is that is that exist? Uh, you know, I I know the menu just like by heart and what I say. And so the, from my perspective, every – the secret menu, if it's there, it, it exists in my head and, and it's my relationship that I have with that with that, that cashier uh, 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 that, uh, uh, you know, kind of you know transcends the menu board. But mm. um, uh, from my understanding, are there any items that – because I, I, I don't even look at the menu board anymore. I just know it. Um, right. Any items that aren't on there? I'm not sure. I'm probably going to have to get back to you on that because yeah, uh, no, I'm thinking – Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> this is something that like intrigues me this is the reason i ask is i feel like taco bell has done such a great job with the different items on the menu when a different item comes out the excitement level they've got mm-hmm. a cantina i guess where you you could drink i assume that's what the taco bell cantina is yeah yeah they got alcohol all in there so yep. then they have taco bell hotels like they do such – like to me, I'm like they have to have a secret menu where you can get stuff that nobody knows about. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe oh, I just made this up in my head. You know what it is? I know the one. Uh, it's the Cheeserito. The Cheeserito. Uh, my buddy Robert, he'll get that. Uh, uh, the Cheeserito. It's just like cheese and I think like uh, the, the taco sauce and the tortilla and sc- – it's mm. just like cheese. That's it. It's, <laughs> it's similar because you, you go on the dollar part of it. They got the cheesy roll up. They got the melted shredded – uh, you know, cheesy mini quesadilla. They got a lot of just like cheese and 
tortilla yeah. items on there. And that one, the cheeserito, I think is, uh, you know, if you like just having, you know, cheese and tortilla and you want to just have it toasted, I think that one is pretty popular. That one I remember. <laughs> I had to pull that one out. Okay. All right. Cool. I was going to say, like, I was like, is that the cheesy roll up? But it's not. It's the cheese. It's different. It's different. Also, too, this was weird. When my wife and I went to get dessert, we got the donuts, which I really <laughs> liked. Yep. Um, and they were like, you can have, uh, there was two sizes or two amounts. It was two or 10. Any idea of why there wasn't <laughs> something like, I don't know, two or four or two or six or three or six or like the extremes of you could only get two or 10, which was a little disappointing because I didn't want to buy 10. But at the same time, you know, we got two. So it was one each. I wanted more than one myself. Any yep. idea why Taco Bell does that? Well, here, those Cinnabon delights. Uh, yes, that's the here, word. Thank you here, for having the research, unlike me. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. The Cinnabon delights. I mean, here, here's the deal. It's, it's either you go big or you go home with a lot of that stuff. So you're getting two. Two is like the starter that you get. And you yeah. try it out. You see whether you like it. And it, it's almost like they're guaranteed that like, oh, okay, I had these two. All right, let's just get 10. Let's just go all in on this. So uh, uh, those two packs, and I think it just scales up. Um, the, the two pack is like a dollar or something yeah. or 99 cents. It's and cheap, yeah. Yeah, it's super cheap. So people would sometimes will just order multiple. Them. You can. It's not like you're getting any sort of extra value you know, because they're so cheap. Um, uh, but that that ten pack is is like I mean uh, me and a friend of mine we just we crush a ten pack together so it's no yeah. <laughs> it's no oh, big I deal it. but I believe well, it you got it uh, they have also the the the, the twists the cinnamon twists yeah had them um, there yeah yeah those are like I don't know if you know this do you know the story of like how those what what those are no no but I, I I'm not this is not hyperbolic I'm dying to hear what you have to say here <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm so serious. believe it or not. Those are just pasta noodles, pasta noodles that they fry up. It is, it is, that's it. And then they toss it in cinnamon and that's it. I, you can find videos online uh, of all this, that they just take a bag of pasta noodles, they'll throw it in the fryer, pull it on out and they puff up and they puff up into that shape and, and then they just toss it. it. It's just straight up hot. You can take, I mean, you could probably test this out at home. Uh, wow. If you have a fryer, <laughs> you just take those, to, to, you know, well, to, yeah. you know, that kind of makes sense in a weird way because when I had them, I was like, you know what? They're fine. They're good. Like I, I almost, when I had these, I thought they tasted like a good health food snack that mm-hmm. you would have <laughs> when you're like, I don't want to eat uh, something terrible for me. So let me have some of these. They've got a little flavor on them. They're a little crunchy, but I didn't think like true dessert. So that, although I would never have thought that in a million years, I'm not completely stunned. Is is, is how, how did that happen? How did that come on the menu? Was it, was it an accident? Do you know? <laughs> uh, it you know it's one it was one of those items that was introduced uh, they, and they're always introducing you know limited kind of stuff uh, uh, items and I think Taco Bell is is just I, I think they're most innovative in trying to figure yeah. out how you can accomplish the biggest thing with the least amount of work possible <laughs> and have the biggest impact and I, I think it's probably just the the result of all of that of, of, right. of them you know they're, they're experimenting what they've got cooking up in those Taco Bell labs um, is, is some true innovators. Uh, I, I feel like I have like some game ideas in my head. I don't have the menu in front of me to pull this off, but I want to be like, all right, Andrew, I'm giving you $6. You have to pull off the ultimate meal. Where do you go? Now, I'm not going to put that pressure on you now. Maybe we can do that in a, <laughs> in a follow-up. I, I, I mean this too. Now, I'm not I'm not kidding. Yep. When the time is right and it's, and it's possible, I'm coming out to Queens and you and Heck I are yeah. filming. We're going to Taco Bell and we're playing this game and we're going to see how we can do uh, with a budget or something. We'll figure it out. It'll be fun. That sounds uh, so we've talked a lot of Taco Bell today. I really appreciate your time. Final one I've got for you, your ultimate go-to. I know you'd mentioned the um, the chicken quesadilla, but if you had to put together, no budget, your ultimate Taco Bell meal, your last meal at Taco Bell, drink included, uh, what are you putting together? What is the Andrew Bork concoction? Well, all right. If I'm putting it all here, drink included, it's definitely the Baja Blast, but not just the regular Baja Blast, the freeze form. The freeze form is like, uh, it's, you know, it's their, their, their slurpy kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, definitely is the go-to for the drink. Uh, if it's my last meal, I'm going two of them. All right, let's just, <laughs> let's make sure. Fair that enough. Going. There ain't no tomorrow. <laughs> Thirst is quenched. Uh, uh, it's going to be around like 20 packs of fire sauce. Um, uh, just dumping that on top of there. Uh, and then uh, two chicken quesadillas, I think a cheesy gourmet. Gordita Crunch, um, one Crunch Wrap Supreme, and then 
uh, I'll probably toss in a Chipotle chicken loaded griller. And the, those, that's my, if that's my final meal and, and I'm going, I'm going out full, uh, mm. I'm, I'm stuffing myself with that. Beautiful. And then finally, because I didn't ask it before, but I should, the drink, the drink. This is uh, Taco Bell has a lot of different drinks on their menu. I mm-hmm. was stunned to see that it's more than just Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, yep. or Coke and Sprite. You mentioned the Mountain Dew Baja Blast in your email, and you just mentioned the freeze. Uh, talk about what makes that drink just so spectacular. Yeah, well, if you're going to a one of those cantinas, you can actually get the freeze uh, in an alcoholic form. I think with like rum or vodka in it, cool. uh, which uh, sometimes in Manhattan late night, uh, you'll see people lining up to to get a, a Baja freeze with, oh with alcohol. Uh, uh, but I think what we I also I call Baja Blast. You, the color of it is like this greenish blue. Uh, mm-hmm. My friends and I we call it Windex. We're like I want to get a just <laughs> get a, a couple yes, of Windex yes, yes. real quick. I see that. Uh, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a cup of it. But uh, uh, something about that makes it so special, I think, is just that uh, it pairs very well with their menu, but also it's kind of like this uh, initiation piece there that you're going to talk about you're not just getting pepsi you're not just getting you know the usual dr pepper or whatever it might be you're getting the baja blast because it's the only th- it's the only place you can get it you, you're only going to get it right. at taco bell so uh yeah yeah i, I think that's uh, that's the reason why it's gained a lot of fame but um uh, flavor wise it's also delicious well andrew this was a lot of fun i have to be honest i could not have done this interview a month ago or i could have but it just would have been a ter- I, I would not have been able to appreciate everything you have to say I, I don't think i'd be able to ask the right questions uh but thank you again for coming on the mike delivers podcast this time talking a little taco bell and at some point eventually we'll get together and we'll have our own magical taco bell experience and i look forward to it that sounds wonderful thank you so much for having me